Welcome back to our discussion on Kingdom of Fungi. In the first lecture, we had talked about the different characters, the characteristic features with regard to vegetative and reproductive. Now, today, we will go move forward to talk about the different groups, that is, the different classes of fungi. As already mentioned, Kingdom of Fungi can be broadly divided into four classes, Phycomyces, Ascomyces, Pseudomyces, and Deuteromyces. Today we will talk about the different classes. Phycomyces, the first class of fungi, which is said to be, which is considered as a lower group of the kingdom, due to their uh, most simplified nature. They are commonly called as bread mold, which grows upon bread pieces. It is a very common observation when a bread piece is left uh, uncovered, or it's left outside in a warm, moist environment, then after a few days, you can see some cottony growth upon the bread base. That is, that fungi which is growing upon it belongs to the group Phycomycetes. As it is commonly growing upon it, they are also referred to as bread mold. They are characterized by presence of r septate sinocytic mycelium. We have already discussed what is the meaning of aseptic sinocytic mycelium? Aseptic, still then I repeat, aseptic is when there are no septation or separation wall between the cells. All the nuclei, they are present within the same mass of cytoplasm or protoplasm. As you can see here, this is a picture. Here is a bread piece upon which the fungus is growing. These are the hypha. These are the hypha which are growing then. Uh, upon the bread piece, saprophytes, they are absorbing the organic matter of it and these are the reproductive structures which stand erect when it's time to reproduce. They reproduce asexually by zoospores or aplanospores. When it comes to asexual mode of reproduction, they will form zoospores or aplanospores. So here you can see these are the spores which are produced within these uh, structures called sporangia within the structures called sporangia which are born upon the special hypha called sporangiophore so initially the mold will be growing upon the substratum then when it's time to reproduce a few will stand erect which we will refer to as sporangiophore produce the sporangium this globular structure inside which numerous spores will develop and once these are shed off, you can see here it's shown, they will again fall upon another substratum and start growing. So here these are the mycelium which absorbs nutrition. These are not roots but these are mycelium. Then sexual reproduction is by formation of zygospore. They do rep uh, reproduce occasionally through sexual mode uh, which is through the formation of zygospore that means two hypha they will come close together then they will form the dicaryon which will fuse later form the zygospore undergo meiosis again to produce the spores the sexual spores very common example the species are rhizopus and muca which you will see growing upon this bread pieces or even upon sometimes rotten fruit or food materials cooked food materials even they grow this is the first class of fungi that is phycomyces next we move on to here this is one more picture we have this is a microscopic view of the fungus when under the microscope you we, when we take out the fungus properly uh, after completing the procedure of staining we observe under the microscope it appears this way these are the sporangium and these are the hypha as i told you it is accepted sinocytic so you can make out through the hypha that there is no septation or separation walls next is the group ascomycetes ascomycetes is also commonly known as sac fungi sac fungi which is a very common commonly occurring uh, fungi you will be seeing growing upon any uh, degrading substances decomposing substances this is a group of fungi characterized by production of sexual spores in a sac like structure called ascus so the name ascomycetes this group of fungi is characterized by production of sexual spores in a sac like structure called ascus 
So the sexual spores are produced in this cup-like structure, sac-like, bag-like structure. These are the ones. This is a microscopic view. The characters, the defining characters, mostly they are terrestrial, parasitic or coprophilous. Terrestrial, you understand, that is upon the land. Parasitic, which when it grows upon other living organisms. Coprophilous, when it is growing upon cow dung. Mostly cow dung, which also contains fermented material. So when it grows upon it, we will say the habit it is coprophilous. They are unicellular or multicellular. Now here you have an exception. Uh, always fungi, as we have discussed, they are multicellular with one or two exceptions. And that exception is found in this particular class, that is Ascomyces. Unicellular forms are found in this particular group. Then the mycelium is made up of septate and branched. So here's a difference from phycomyces in that the mycelium or the hypha, they are septate. They have separation walls. At the same time, they are also branched. So here, there's a picture of the hypha where you can see these are the separation walls. Cell wall is made up of chitin or beta-glucans. There is cytoplasmic continuity due to septal pores. Now, though they have separation walls, some minute pores might be present with, due to which the cytoplasm may be continuous throughout. But, of course, you have to remember the point that they do have separation walls and each chamber has the nucleus. They reproduce both sexually and asexually. Asexual reproduction is by the formation of conidia exogenously on conidial force. Exogenously means the spores are produced outside that structure. So as like the other ones, the other group, the hypha will grow upon the substratum, whether it is growing upon a dead material or upon the other living organisms. Initially they will grow, then when it's time to reproduce, they will stand erect, produce a bulbous structure, and the spores will not be inside the bulbous structure, but they will be present outside the bulbous structure. Outwardsly, they will grow. That is why we call it as exogenously, as you can see here. So this is the hypha, which is stand erect, conidiophore, and here these are the uh, conidiospores, conidia, which are growing exogenously outside. Example of unicellular form is yeast or saccharomyces it reproduces asexually by budding here the unicellular form which of uh, ascomyces that is yeast produces reproduces by budding sexual reproduction is by conjugation between two gametangia conjugation means union between two gametangia they are either homothelic or heterothelic now these are two new terms Homothelic means when both the thallus are exactly same. Heterothelic when there is some difference with regard to strain in both the thallus that will unite together during sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, the general uh, pattern we have talked about in a previous lecture already. The fruiting body is known as ascocarp. The fruiting body after sexual reproduction will be referred to as ascocarp. Reproductive structure is known as ascus or asci. Here you have the pictures. Now these are the ascus or asci. These are the ones. Now what happens once it is formed, if we start from here. Uh, okay, let us start from here. This is the hypha. These are the hypha which are septed as you can see. And when it's time to reproduce, what will happen? They will uh, grow erect and then they will produce the asexual spores that is conidia. Then when it is time to reproduce asexually, if it is a heterotelic, here it is indicating heterotelic where we are calling as minus and plus strain. They are, there are some differences with regard to the hypha. Then the, what will happen? They will, uh, plasmogamy will take place which will be union of the uh, cytoplasmic contained through a bridge which will connect both the two hypha. So here you can see some structures develop actually, which will unite together. So once they unite, what will happen? That they will go to a dikaryotic form. Dikaryotic form means the new, both the nuclei will remain in one. 
will move towards one to form then that particular structure wherever the dicarion is existing gradually the nuclei will fuse together they will form the uh, they will form the ascogonium they will form the ascogonium this structure you can see it is enlarged here ascogonium or ascogonium or sky then karyogamy takes place union of the nuclei which takes place along with the formation of the young ascus so parallelly these events are happening then upon the young ascus what will happen there will be the the young ascus this is the zygote they will undergo meiosis they will undergo meiosis which is reduction division to reduce the chromosome number because fungi they are usually haploid organisms so here union resulted in diploid structure so gradually what will happen they will undergo reduction division consequently they will form numerous cells which will again divide by mitosis to increase the number then each of them will develop into the spores which we call as ascos spores they will be called as ascospores where is it present in this cup like structure in such cup like structures this ascospores will be produced when they are shed off when they will be released they will again result into the hypha which can either reproduce asexually or can go for sexual mode of reproduction so these are the two two ways how the kingdom the members of kingdom ascomycetes can uh, reproduce next we have kingdom sorry next we have under the kingdom fungi we have basidiomycetes we have basidiomycetes so basidiomycetes is commonly uh, called as mushrooms or bracket fungi they grow on soil logs tree stumps or sometimes as a parasite usually they are found in soil or logs that is uh, they will grow as saprophytes mycelium again here is branch and septet septet like the ascomycetes forms so here you can see these are the hypha then vegetative reproduction takes place by fragmentation now out here the more common is vegetative reproduction and sexual reproduction there is uh, the sex organs are absent but plasmogamy is brought about by fusion of two vegetative or somatic cells of different strains which gives rise to basidium arranged in fruiting bodies called karyogamy and meiosis takes place in the basidium producing four basidiospores so what will happen the sex organs are absent like the ascomycetes but plasmogamy is brought about by fusion of two vegetative or somatic cells so plasmogamy will be brought about by fusion of like here this is the one so what will happen they will fuse together by two cells there is no separate structure which will help in that fusion so the nucleus of one will travel to the other okay so then karyogamy will take place followed by meiosis it will be followed by meiosis which will give rise to four basidiospores four basidiospores within the basidium these are the basidium these are the basidium in mushrooms the structure which you see the umbrella shaped structure that is actually the basidium example agaricus paxenia which is a disease causing parasite agaricus is mushroom so here you can see this is the fruiting body or the basidiocarp basidiocarp this is the basidiocarp which beneath underneath if you see you will see some foldings now if you penetrate deep into the folding you will see the hypha as also um, the basidiospores each basidium has four spores four why because each of them underwent one meiotic division that resulted in the formation of four haploid uh, spores when they are shed off they will give rise to the new uh, hypha which will be definitely branched as well as septate here sexual asexual mode of reproduction is not seen they either reproduce through vegetative or through sexual mode the last class deuteromycetes now deuteromycetes is also referred to as imperfect fungi why because only the sexual or vegetative phase is known the asexual phase is not yet seen or not yet discovered but if if uh, during the ongoing research later 
any member of deuteromycetes, the uh, sexual phase is identified. If it can be identified, then depending upon what pattern it is taken, it can be taken out from the class deuteromycetes and placed under either FICO, ESCO or Basidio. But till that time it is unknown, it will be kept in the kingdom, uh, in the class deuteromycetes. As such, it is also referred to as imperfect fungi. So here you can see, this is a very common observation. If in plants you will see some spots, the leaves, the powdery mass, what are those? Those are fungal infections due to the uh, members belonging to deuteromycetes. So here you can see these are the diseased part of the leaves. They reproduce only by asexual spores, which are conidia. So here, these are the conidia which appears uh, under the microscope. It appears so under the microscope. This belongs to the species Alternaria. So this is also under the microscope. This is how we view it. The mycelium is septate and branched. Like the basidomyces, the mycelium is septate and branched. Some are saprophytes or parasites. A large number of them are decomposers of litter and help in mineral recycling. Mostly they are parasites or some are saprophytes which will be acting as decomposers. Examples, Alternaria, Colitotrichum and Trichoderma. So these are some disease causing ones, trichoderma, which is a disease which causes skin infections in humans too. Alternaria, this is alternaria species, which causes diseases in plants. In uh, wheat plants, they can cause some diseases. So this is all about the four classes of kingdom fungi. So uh, I hope uh, you could follow my explanation. As also, while studying, you can do one thing. You can uh, compare each of the classes with reference to vegetative as well as the reproductive structures. Thank you.